You're watching She Takes on the World TV. I'm your host, Natalie McNeil, and my guest today is Selena Sue, a publicity expert who has helped many of the most influential entrepreneurs that I know to become industry leaders. Now it's your turn, so let's get started. Selena, you are one of the most connected people I have ever met. You know everybody. And is that something that's come naturally to you, to be this super connector? Because you actually haven't been in business for that long, considering this extensive network that you've built. Yeah, so that's something that actually does come naturally to me, um, even though I'm an introvert, even though I'm someone who's naturally shy, and the reason is because I'm a really big giver. So I get really excited to meet people um, and be able to help them reach their goals faster. And so that's why I love to connect people. It's one of the you know highest impact ways to make a difference in someone's life. I can definitely speak to that about you because you are always connecting me and some of our peers in the industry with opportunities and with each other and forming those relationships and connecting people without necessarily getting anything in return. I mean, you don't do it right to get anything. It really is from a place of service and I think that that's what people forget about when they're reaching out and building their network. True. I mean, one thing is that it feels good. So in a way, I feel like I'm getting something in return. Sometimes the act of giving itself can be the reward. But when I'm looking to connect people, I want it to be a three-way win. So I want it to be a win for the both people who are connecting with each other and also a win for me because it was rewarding for me to do. And when you started reaching out to influencers in the earlier days of your business, what did that look like? So for people who are watching and they're thinking, I don't know if I'm ready for that, or my business is brand new, I've never reached out to someone who really inspires me before, <laughs> Um, how did they get started and how did you get started? Sure, so the very first thing is mindset because you, if you have all these negative thoughts about reaching out to people, then you're not gonna do it or you're gonna come across the wrong way. So one of my favorite sayings is, the moment you put someone on a pedestal is the moment they start looking down on you. Ooh, say that one again. <laughs> so the moment you put someone on a pedestal is the moment that they start looking down on you. And so that's not to say that the people you admire aren't important or that they haven't accomplished things because they have, but as human beings, we're the same. And the way that you really level that playing field in your mind is by adding value. And so when I'm approaching really influential people, I'm not thinking, you know, who am I to approach them? Because if I did, if I had that, you know, dialogue, I'm nothing, they're everything, then that's creating this energetic imbalance. But rather, I'm showing up as someone who really wants to give to them. And because I know that, you know, my intention is just to give and make their life better, then I don't really have anything holding me back from reaching out to them. It just removes all the fear from the equation. Do you think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to networking, is just not being focused on the giving and the adding value? Yeah, you have to be focused on the other person. So when I'm reaching out to someone, I always put myself in their shoes. So I understand that they are exceptionally busy people. They have, you know, in many cases, no time. They're probably wishing they had more time for their family and friends. So if I'm reaching out to them, it should be about something worthwhile that's in their interest, or it could just be something quick expressing appreciation. But I'm always looking to be very mindful of their time and really focused on their needs first and foremost. And also, you know, I think a lot of people approach networking with this short-term approach. Like, let me connect with this person and hopefully very soon I can get something out of it. And I really have this long-term approach and also this sense of trust. I know that if I build a relationship with someone and I show up as a giver consistently over time, good things will happen. It doesn't matter how soon it happens or who's the person who's gonna give back to me, but as I continue to build that good karma in the world, that I will also receive as well. When you're reaching out to people, how are you usually approaching that? Is it a phone call? Is it an email? Is it being at events in order to connect with people? Is it different every yeah. time? 
Um, for me, it's usually started with email, especially at the very beginning. So one of the first influencers that I reached out to was Danielle Laporte. And it was just a couple of years or maybe one year after I graduated from college. And I had gotten a newsletter and learned about her business at the time. And I thought it was really cool. And I just reached out to her saying how I admired her work. And there was someone in the media that I wanted to connect her with. And so that was how it started. I didn't ask her for anything. And now that relationship has evolved. Um, and, you know, she's someone who I am like much closer to now. So that's been amazing. Um, but, you know, I was developing that relationship, um, you know, in, mostly in small little ways over the years. And I never really asked her for anything except uh, when I was in business school, I wanted her advice on my next career moves. Um, so sometimes people will ask, like, how soon should I ask for a favor? Um, sometimes it's appropriate to ask, you know, maybe in a couple weeks if it makes sense. Sometimes it might be years, it doesn't really matter. Another person that I reached out to was Sheryl Sandberg when I read um, that she was launching her first book ever. And it was a little bit um, bold of me, you know, to reach out to her. And I just said, like, I would love to help you with your book launch. And she already had a publicist. And I said, that's fine. I still want to help you. And so that's how I got on her radar and was able to add value. It's amazing. <laughs> Are some of these things habitual to you at this point? So reaching out to influencers is that something that you schedule and have a system around is it something that you're doing every week what are some of the habits and systems that you have around this outreach that you do because you must reach out to a lot of people you have this massive network and not only reach out to new people but just the maintenance of yes. the network that you have yeah so i do have some habits so every year i get clear on what are my top two goals for my business and my life and then I create an influencer list around it. So the influencer list, you know, is a list of people who can help me reach my goals faster. And then um, typically every month I will just scan through that list and see if anyone pops up, you know, jumps out at me. And then I'll look them up on social media. I'll think about, is there something that I could help them with? Um, so that's a habit. Another habit is every month I do an influencer dinner party. And so I invite, um, you know, interesting entrepreneurs and the media and I bring those people together. And that's a really good way to maintain relationships because as you build your influencer network and you know eventually you have dozens or maybe even hundreds of influencers in your network, it's hard to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with them all the time. But if you bring together a group of people for a dinner, maybe a 15 person dinner or a 30 to 50 person gathering, then you're reconnecting with everybody at the same time. And then you're creating even more value because all of your influencers get to meet each other. I love that and it's definitely something that I want to do and intend on doing very soon. And one of the things that I want to do and take on for this week though is the influencer list. So I want to work with you in creating this list and then for the next week I'm committed to reaching out to at least one of those people every day. Sounds great. <laughs> okay, so influencer list, what's step one? So step number one is getting clear on what your top two goals are. And then once you're clear on your top two goals, you want to figure out who are the people who can help you reach that goal. So these could be people who have already achieved that goal. It could be people who are a couple steps ahead of you, or it could be somebody who can introduce you to someone who can help with that goal. So for example, if you were looking to write a book, someone that might be able to help you is someone who has already written a book, or maybe someone who is in the process of doing that, or perhaps someone who can make connections to you for you, like connecting you to a literary agent or to a book writing coach. I'm going to build out this list and reach out to at least one person every day this week, and I'll keep you posted. Sounds great. Thank you so much for your advice and for sharing so much today. Oh, you're so welcome.